Welcome to another episode of First Person. Uh, today we are talking to Kara Krejci and the topic is asexuality and I'm super excited about this episode because it is probably the most requested episode from all of you. So we're going to head to Kara's apartment and then we're going to have a picnic at the park and we're going to ask her all about what it means to her to identify as asexual. So I think it's time for a picnic. Let's go. We have carrots and hummus and crackers. And we're gonna have a picnic in the place that you do a lot of your writing. I'm Kara, Kara Krejci. I'm going to be starting a master's in library science so that I can become a librarian. In the meantime, I'm a barista. You've written for my organization, Everyone is Gay. Yes. But can you tell me what other kind of writing that you do? So I just graduated from college and there I was doing this really long-term project about asexuality and Sherlock fan fiction. I am gray ace, non-binary, and queer. I prefer ace because I think it sounds less clinical. And Plus also, like ace. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want this side? Yeah. Look at those crazy sculptures. Where to have a picnic? Soda. Oh my god, I'm so hungry. <laughs> How do you identify specifically? So I identify as gray ace, okay. which is kind of under the ace umbrella. Mm -hmm. Asexual or ace is a person who does not experience sexual attraction. A person who identifies as gray ace is somebody who's like somewhere between like asexual and allosexual, which is like the opposite of asexual. Mm -hmm. There are lots of ways that you could be gray ace, experiencing like low sexual attraction, only experiencing sexual attraction in specific circumstances, or like not really understanding like what sexual attraction is, being mm -hmm. unsure about it. And then there's within gray ace like another identity called demisexual, and that's a person who only experiences sexual attraction in the context of like a close emotional bond. So it took me a really long time to like claim asexuality as like an identity for myself. If somebody said to me, asexuality is just celibacy, I would say, well, no, because asexuality is about attraction and not action. A person who doesn't experience sexual attraction is asexual. A person who doesn't have sex is celibate. What are your thoughts on how asexuality aligns with like queer and trans communities? I do kind of see asexuality as like a non-binary sexuality. There's a spectrum of like gay, bisexual, straight. Mm -hmm. Asexuality is somewhere off over here in a way that I think is pretty queer. In the sense that the world is telling you that the normal thing is yeah. to want to have sex, and right. in that sense, you are queer. Have you gotten a lot of pushback against your identity? Yeah, it's hard to like break through to people who have an idea of what <laughs> queerness is. There are all these terms I have to define before like even having a conversation. Right. Well, I think a lot of people feel like you feel because this, I mean, this episode was the most requested episode. I mean, yeah. you know, every time we asked, like what needs more exposure? Who do you want to hear from? People were like, asexuality. I want to have a picnic every episode. Does anybody want a cookie? <laughs> the stereotypes about asexuality is that aces are boring or childish, which mm. I really hate. Where it's like you can't be an adult if you're not like having sexual relationships. Mm -hmm. You're stunted in some way, like right. socially or developmentally. Why do you think that asexuals aren't being seen more? I think it's a hard thing to represent. That's why I ended up studying fan fiction because that was a medium in which exploring sexuality is a norm. Fan fiction authors are exploring like intimacy that like isn't portrayed on screen because it's it's boring but like really intense fans don't think it is. Right. But like how interesting would it be to have a, a representation of a couple where one of the people is asexual and yeah. they're having that dialogue and like exploring that and you see the nuances of what that means. Exactly. No, I think it can be interesting and I think the most interesting stories are about characters that, that um, defy your expectations. I first found Sherlock fan fiction right when series three was coming out and something in my brain said, you know, I bet there's fan fiction of this. And let me tell you, there was. <laughs> I know that I've like made friendships and like relationships through this project, through fan fiction that have helped me. Take your time, chew your pepperoni. I mean, I want you to enjoy the picnic, you know? I'll take this opportunity to open my soda. 
I figure if I make the joke enough, they'll have to put it in. Yeah. <laughs> I think that the visibility of the asexual community is growing. Certainly it isn't where I think either of us would want it to be, but it's yeah. being spoken about more. I also think it's a matter of like sex education. When I was a teenager, I did not have the resources to like have a conversation. Like you said in like the Clitoracy video where it's just like, put a condom. Right, put a condom on the penis. penis yeah. into the vagina. Like, that's how sex works. And that's all the information you get. Consent needs to be like a big part of sex education. And that's a place where you could put in, like some people don't want to have sex at all. And that's okay. Right. Um, and that like opens up space for like, people to write about their experiences or write characters with these experiences. Well, and it opens up space for you to exist, too. Yeah. It's like, and for like, me to understand you as a person with an identity. It's like, if I was in school and they were like, and this is a feeling you might have, and some people don't have those feelings, and I would have spent a lot of my life understanding people very differently. Exactly. Um, that is not how it was communicated. No. <laughs> the act of like, portraying characters as asexual is bringing people together on the internet. Um, in a way that is forming communities and like helping people form identities. There's the cliche, you know, like be the writer you needed when you were a kid and like I kind of feel like that's what I'm doing. Thank you so much for being here and having a picnic with me. You're welcome. Thank you for having yes, me. Yes, of course. Um, you should all check out more of Kara's writing and everything that she's doing. It's totally awesome. And please subscribe, of course, to our channel. I want to call it back to a few episodes ago where we asked about political art that you were influenced by on the Clitoracy episode and just say that so many of you shared incredible stuff with us. Art that I had never heard of, artists that I had never heard of, and it was super educational for me, so thank you. Um, and today, I want to ask them about fan fiction. What is your favorite fan fiction that you've ever read? What has fan fiction done for you as a person and your identity? All right, thank you guys. See you next week. Bye.